Greetings from the Nerd Cave, Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Stan Gibalisco here with a new toy, a Radio Shack TRMS Digital Multimeter. It can measure resistance, it can measure voltage, it can measure current, just like any common multimeter can. And it can also measure frequency and capacitance right there. Interesting. Well, I've got it set to measure capacitance in nanofarads. What you do is you set the switch to the ohms position. I don't know if you can actually see that here, but this switch is set to ohms or nanofarads, and you select which one you want, ohms, kiloohms, megaohms, or nanofarads, by hitting this select switch along with the range switch. I don't believe the range switch gives me any effect on this, uh, on capacitance. On resistance, if you hit select, now it's giving me kiloohms, megaohms, ohms, kiloohms, 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 megaohms. The decimal point can be adjusted. You go back, you hit select, now we're back to nanofarads. Well, what I've got here is three capacitors. 0.1 microfarad, 0.1 microfarad, and 0.0047 microfarads. The reason that this capacitor is physically larger, even though its capacitance is smaller, is that this one is rated at 500 working volts DC. These are only rated at 50 working volts DC. So let's actually measure this. Now remember we're in nanofarads. These are given in uh, microfarads. So a nanofarad is a thousandth of a microfarad. So one microfarad would be a thousand nanofarads. Point one microfarad would be 100 nanofarads. Let's see what we get. 90 and a bit. So that one's about 10% low. It's actually off by about 10%. I think that most uh, components, unless they're specifically stamped with a rating, uh, are 20% plus or minus. So that is, I guess, within acceptable tolerance. 90.81, that's about a little over 9% low. Remember, 0.1 microfarads would be 100 nanofarads. Now we've got 0 0.0047. 0 0.0047 microfarads would be, if you multiply by 1,000, I believe it would be 1 to 40, 47. No, let's see. 0 0.0047, if you multiply that by 1,000, you get 4.7. Well, we're getting about 4.559 nanofarads. Okay, well, that's cool. Now, once again, let's look at these. 90, you've got to give this meter a little bit of time to find its uh, bearings. 90.41. 90. Well, now it's reading a little bit less. So we got about 90 nanofarads for both of these. So when we measure their result in series, we should get about half of that. And we do. It's a little bit less, though, 44.55. I would have expected just a tad over 45, maybe, but uh, it's pretty close. I don't know exactly why the discrepancy, but... Remember, if you connect two identical capacitors in series, the resulting capacitance is half the capacitance of either one taken alone. You do double the working voltage, assuming that it splits the voltage equally, but they would have to be the same capacitance for that to happen. And uh, you can't really rely on that. Now remember, what we had here was 4.5 and something. Let's look at that in series with this one. Makes it a little smaller. Well, how much smaller? We've got to press down pretty hard with these probes. 
four point two. Let's let's try it all the way with all three of them in series. About four point one one eight finally stabilizes. That's to be expected if you connect a rather uh, smaller capacitor in series with a rather larger one you're going to get something just a little bit less than the rather smaller one and then another one of these larger ones you're going to get something just a little bit more less than the rather smaller one does that make sense you can actually take these values and plug them into the formula for capacitors in series and see how close I have come here are the values again, 4.556 nanofarads, 90.73, you writing these down, 89.9190. I wonder why that capacitance is going down like that. It could be that the meter is subjecting it to a little bit of voltage and it's actually heating it up some. I I really don't know. It's only three volts in that meter. You wouldn't think that would happen. Mystery of mysteries. The real world versus the theoretical. So I've shown you the real. Now it's up to you to take the theoretical and compare. Take the formula from my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics for Capacitors in Series and compare with the results that I got. Here again is the result of all three of them in series. Well, and now we've got to bear down on this on these probes here. About 4.127. We can take that as our reading there and go with it. So that is that. What you're looking at uh, otherwise here, these nails pounded into this wood, is a breadboard designed for people like me with fat fingers. Often they have band-aids on them because I cut myself every day somewhere, just like a little 10-year-old kid. I've actually cut myself on a round doorknob. Can you believe that? I mean, the day's going to come when Stan Gibalisco cuts himself on a cotton ball i got to write a science fiction story about that. It's just so weird. It's like I'm my own poltergeist. Well, I got through this, and uh, that's the way this little capacitance meter works. Kind of a cool little thing, huh? I mean, it's, uh, capacitance meters are not that common, but Radio Shack has them. So with that, I will sign off. From the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, Stan Gibalisco, until next time, saying so long.